Okay. I am so sorry, guys. I, I goofed up. Um, I had assumed that if you just take too long in this room, you'll get eaten up by the... Well, you won't get eaten up. You'll get beaten up, really, by the Minotaur, but... Um, I did a little research on the internet, and it says that if you don't have a way to spy through this wall, then he'll come and get you. Which to me makes no sense, but okay. Anyway, I'm so sorry I wasted your time. I really love this death, and I... <sighs> it's got kind of a gory death. No, it's pretty awesome, though. His, his eyes get all huge, and, and the minotaur head butts him, and he goes flying across the room. Um... But oh well. Okay, let's see if I can make my way through this maze. Oh my gosh, that scared me. His, the bat went like right in front of his face. I think we go this way. Yeah, I think so. And then you go down. Yeah, apparently it's it only happens if you come into the room and don't have the hole in the wall. So you'd have to go in and not have the hole in the wall. But I swear, like I, I thought I did it before where I had the hole in the wall and I got killed anyway. I think there might be a death trap down here, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't think it's supposed to go down from here. Oh, no, oh. It's just, just a dead end. <laughs> okay, it's okay. It's all good. I'm doing pretty well. I haven't hit a single death trap by accident. Oh no, it's a wild animal. There's no wild animal in these catacombs. Hmm, do I go up or do I go straight? I would try going up. Yeah, oh my gosh! Go. I, I went through this entire thing without hitting a death trap, unless it was on purpose. Wow. That is pretty awesome. We are so dorky. Shut up. <laughs> a very beautiful, very dusty tapestry hangs on the wall. The tapestry weaves its tail in silence. That's kind of clever. Hmm. This tapestry looks familiar. Now let's see. I don't feel anything. Aha! Hidden latch. Alexander trigger, triggers a little latch. A secret door rolls open. Well, let's go inside. Oh dear. No! I beg of you, please don't hurt me! <laughs> Your struggles are useless! <laughs> <coughs> very good, Lake Light, very good. It's the Minotaur, and he's struggling with a winged one's girl. She must be Lady Celeste. So, uh, yeah. The Minotaur is a huge, monstrous beast with cloven hooves and the head of a bull. A beautiful winged one girl is struggling for her life against the Minotaur. Ooh, what's this? A monstrous altar towers in one corner of the room. Alexander shudders with revulsion at the thought of, of the rituals performed at that sacrificial table. A pit has caved in the floor in one corner of the Minotaur's lair. Flames rise from the pit as though from the throat of a dragon trapped in the earth, or as in hell. The fire makes the lair unbearably hot. Well, uh, let's see if we can just sneak away. <laughs> Alexander steps further into the room. The movement catches Lady Celeste's eye. She screams for help. You there! Human! Help me! Help! Oh, um... Who dares enter my lair? I ask you to release your captive or suffer the consequences. Roar! Never! You die, human! As the Minotaur advances in attack, Alexander slowly backs away. And by backs away, I mean he turns around and kind of, yeah, until he can back away no more. Now we're to, little man. Okay. Oh, look, he's got like highlights on the fire. Now, I could die here, but since I've died so many times and wasted so much time, I'm just not going to. What you need to do is you need to tempt him with a red scarf from the queen. Alexander, his back inches from the fiery pit, tempts the minotaur with the red queen scarf. Look here, you bully. Nice, bright red. <coughs> red! <laughs> now you die! Or not. Ooh. Now you die. <laughs> Where did you go? <laughs> the Minotaur drops from sight amidst the consuming flames. Slowly his scream fades as well. Have you been harmed, Lady Celeste? Are you alright? 
No, I am not all right. I assume you do not intend to leave me tied up on this vile monstrosity. Uh, of course not. Sorry. Let's see. If you give me a moment, I'll have these untied in no time. <sighs> I can't wait that long. Look, I wear a small dagger just inside my belt. It should be enough to cut the rope. Jeez. Okay. You think you are? Oh, all right. I, I've got it, Lady Celeste. Here we go. And he saws her in half. Thank you. You may keep the dagger as a gift for saving my life. That's very generous. Forget it. Do you mind if we just get out of here now? You're welcome. Oh, hello, Raven. The Winged One's guards, bored with the pointless waiting, are startled by the sound of rock moving against rock. I'm sorry, are you sure that's winged and not winged? They pronounce it winged in the voice version. Okay. Go. Oh. Lady Celeste, bide thee well. I'm quite well, thanks to the bravery of a mere human. So much for your superior intellects. Yes, my lady. Now bring him along. I'm going home. And I think that raven just twinkled nevermore at us. Okay, I guess we're going again. I see you have proven yourself the hero of the prophecy. Well, I am expected to thank you for saving my daughter's life, so I thank you. That's the only reason he's thanking us, because it's expected of him? I hate these winged ones. I am obliged to thank you for the restoration of our sacred catacombs. It means much to our people. We have already begun the process of clearing the deadly traps from its rooms. It is also my duty to grant you a visit with the Oracle, so this I do. I will grant you the freedom to leave here unharmed, despite my orders to the contrary from the Crown. But there, my obligations to you end. I have no love for Alhazred, but he is my liege, and if Princess Cosima trusts him and wishes to wed him, my guards will take you to the Oracle now. When your time with her is through, I want you to leave the city of the Winged Ones and never return. I think Lady Ariel kind of died at some point. I don't know who you are or what you want here, but I will not disobey my crown further. I thank you, Lord Azor. I respect your... I will respect your wishes. Yeah, Lady Ariel seems paralyzed with joy. Alright, here we have the Oracle, who looks like an 80s rocker. Hail to the great Oracle! Lord Azur sends you this wingless male. It appears that he solved the Cliffs of Logic and... Defeated the Minotaur in his lair. So I have seen. So this is the one that haunts my pool of late. Welcome, young sinker. What knowledge do you desire? Princess Cosima, whatever you can tell me, great oracle. Ah, of course, the princess. That explains my images. Let us see what we can see. Ooh, hello. I see a maiden, lovely and pure, but surrounded by evil. She is a rose set amidst bitter thorns. It is her fate to be the pawn of dark powers. Uh oh, the void. And yours to try to redeem her. How? How do I redeem her? Fate is not like the cut of a blade, young one, but rather like the myriad of paths formed when a hammer cracks ice. I will tell you what I can, but what will actually come to pass is up to you. I see that any attempt to reach the girl will force you into battle, a struggle against a dark force. If you lose, your life will be forfeit. Who must I fight? A great darkness surrounds your adversary, preventing me from seeing clearly. I can only make out the shape of a black cloak. But before this final struggle, I see an Ill infiltration dangerous game of hide-and-seek in corridors filled with enemies. The risks are high, but it is the only way to reach the one you seek. There is more than one way into this place. Your choice will dictate much. What else do you see, mighty oracle? Well, we'll have to figure out what else she sees in the next video because we're running out of time. Sorry, I, I wish I could have ended this in a more practical moment, but... Oh well. 
All right, see you next time, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.